Picture this, over 1 trillion in commercial real estate debt is coming due in 2025. Vacancy rate reached 17.8% at the end of September. And that's not all. You've seen Mark Baum or Steve Eisman as portrayed by Steve Carroll in the big short. Now look what he's saying now. I mean, do I think commercial real estate, well, not commercial real estate, office real estate uh -huh. is going to be a problem? Yeah, we do. I happen to think the whole banking sector is uninvestable. Even Kevin O'Leary. I'm just being honest with you that nobody's going to put money into a regional bank when they know it could be one of the ones that goes to zero next week. So, so why uh, would you do that? Commercial real estate and regional banks are a ticking time bomb that could be about to explode. Could this be 2008 all over again or even worse? demand for everything, retail, office, apartments, every aspect of real estate is going to get whacked. And I think we're just in the first inning. Welcome back, everybody, to Benzinga, where we leveled the playing field for all investors. Today, I will reveal what I feel is the next ticking time bomb in the financial world. The regional bank exposure to the faltering commercial real estate market. So let's paint the picture of how this started. The seeds of the commercial real estate lending boom were planted back in 2008 when the housing bubble burst. I'm sure you've all seen the big short. Predatory subprime mortgages, feverish speculation, and rampant fraud in mortgage-backed securities ultimately triggered a massive foreclosure crisis. Home prices plummeted. Major banks failed and the stock market plunged, wiping out nearly $8 trillion in wealth. It was the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Hey, things are normal. Nothing's going on. We don't, we don't see any problem. And I turned to him and I said, you will. In response, the Federal Reserve took drastic action to save the banking system and the economy. They slashed interest rates to zero, and unleashed a tidal wave of cheap money through quantitative easing. While necessary at the time, this flood of easy money had unintended consequences. With mortgage lending now tightly regulated, banks and investors turned to commercial real estate in search of higher yields. So to lend to a bank, we simply use the computer to mark up the size of the account that they have with the Fed. So it's much more akin uh, although not exactly the same, but it's much more akin to printing money than it is to borrowing. And with interest rates so low, debt was cheaper than ever. Lending for commercial properties like office towers, malls, apartments, and buildings absolutely exploded. Total commercial real estate loans at banks more than doubled $1 trillion in 2015 to over $2 trillion by 2022. It was a speculative frenzy not seen since the lead up to 2008. And that brings us into today. Fast forward to 2023. Silicon Valley imploded almost overnight in a modern day bank run. Their loans were too concentrated in risk startup investments. When a few high profile startups failed, it sparked contagion. Depositors rushed to pull their money on fears that SVB would collapse next. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation rushed in to contain the damage, orchestrating a takeover to avoid outright failure. But immense damage was already done. The bank's headquarters now sits empty in a ghost town of deserted cubicles and blank screens. SVB's demise also claimed Signature Bank and cast a pall on investments like Credit Suisse. Nervous customers fled banks with any type of risk. What did this reveal to the concerned investors and bank customers? This crisis revealed the glaring dangers of overexposure and the lack of diversification. Yet many regional banks are making the same mistakes today with commercial real estate concentration. This all leads to the massive systemic problem in lending, which is already showing cracks. 
In fact, around 15% of the U.S. bank now exceeds the FDIC's recommendation concentration levels for commercial real estate loans. This almost doubles what it was two years ago. The SVB implosion provided a warning. Regional banks are skirting on the edge of their own abyss. Did you know an estimated $1.5 trillion in commercial real estate debt is set to mature by the end of 2025? With rising interest rates, many property owners are finding it increasingly challenging to refinance their existing loans. So I'm sure you've had to refinance at some point. Now picture this, instead of refinancing your $300,000 mortgage, you had to refinance billions of dollars. This is exactly what the bank and loan originators are facing today. But here's the catch. The market's particularly shaky in the office sector. With remote work becoming a norm, there's far less demand for office space today. In some major city, vacancy rates are soaring, causing office property values to plummet by a staggering 27%. Why does that matter? And how could you get profit off this? Let's go deeper into the numbers and answer the top two questions. What type of bank has the most exposure? And which banks have that most exposure? Here's some eye-opening stats. Regional banks have a whopping 55.5 of all outstanding commercial real estate debt. This is significantly higher than what is larger national banks have on their books. When we talk about the overall exposure of commercial real estate lending, that of course would include Wells Fargo around 154 billion, followed by the Bank of America at 75 billion. Now, what really matters is the size of exposure relative to banks' balance sheet as the impact of prolonged interest rates are hitting banks hard and property values are starting to decline. Many loans will be underwater. Get your pencils out now. This is where Money Mitch gives you the trading idea from the video. Of all the regional banks overloaded with risky commercial real estate debt, a few names stand out especially vulnerable, making them potentially short targets. Let's focus on M&T Bank, MTB. Based in Buffalo, M&T has an alarming $44.6 billion in total commercial real estate loans, equal to a massive 34% of their total lending portfolio. Imagine if over one third of your personal finances were tied up in your friend's struggling restaurant or your brother's vacant office building. This situation in MTB is exactly what they're facing. It's not just MNT, Bank of Ozark, and I'm not talking the one on Netflix, down in Little Rock has gobbled up commercial real estate like it's an all-you-can-eat buffet at the Bellagio. These loans make up 61.4% of Ozark's total lending, leaving them hugely exposed to any downturn. As property values decline, these two regional banks are primed for significant losses. Their extreme exposure relative to assets should put MTB and Ozark on every short seller's radar. MTB and Ozark are the dominoes posed to fall first, triggering a cascade of bank failures across the region. In summary, MTB and Ozark stand out as overexposed and vulnerable to the coming commercial real estate slide. Their lending behaviors may make them the next big shorts. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe and like this video to stay up to date with the latest insights. If you want to see more deep dives on topics in Wall Street, you can always add me on Twitter, MoneyMitchBZ. But wait, there's more to this story. If capital levels of these banks fall too low, some of them could become what we call zombie banks. Simply put, they won't generate enough income to stay afloat. This is the sign that the major collapse has begun, but by this time, the FOMO hits, and it will be too late for traders to chase. I'm sure you're wondering why you think things will get this bad, and calling me a doomsayer. But do you remember that savings and loan crisis of the 80s? 
I'm sure you, not many of you do, but zombie banks back then, these banks took two risky bets to recover profits, making the crisis even worse. We all know how greedy banks can be, and why wouldn't they, as they get bailed out nearly every time? Which puts in question, what are the rising credit risks? Let's look at this story of Julie, a small business owner in Atlanta with five retail closing stores in local malls. She took out a $3 million adjustable rate loan in 2019 to expand improving stores, counting on continued strong foot traffic. But the pandemic turned malls into ghost towns overnight. Then interest rates kept climbing on her variable loan. As the Fed raised rates, monthly payments went from $12,000 to $22,000, almost double. Julie cut expenses to the bone trying to keep up with payments, but with sales down 40%, she had to close two stores entirely. And last week, she made the painful decision of defaulting on the loan before bleeding her business dry. Stores like Julie are becoming more common and showing the cracks that are in the commercial real estate space. Take a look at this graph as delinquencies on commercial real estate loans continue to rise. The overall CMBS delinquency rate sits at 4.25% as of August 2023, up from just 1.55% before the pandemic hit. Retail property delinquencies are up even more sharply, raising over 150% to 6.16%. The faults are on the rise and regional banks highly exposed to commercial real estate looks poised to take significant losses in the months ahead. As we move forward, the concern is what happens on the underwriting standards for refinancing. Commercial real estate loans from 2018 and earlier with five to seven years of maturity are now knocking on the door for renewal. Regional banks face years of pressure in this sector, and it's not just from the percentage of loans maturing soon. To wrap it all up, regional banks are on shaky grounds as the commercial real estate sector enters the distress mode. This crisis could unravel over the next months. Let's not forget how Michael Burry made his billions. Michael Burry was actually early on the financial crisis, which led him to start the bet in the red until the house of cards started to fall. From there, things snowballed really quickly. The clock is ticking on this commercial real estate bomb, so I'm going to position my portfolio defensively and capitalize on the impending slide. Now, the question is, you gotta ask, will you capitalize on this opportunity? Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like this video. We'll keep you updated on the risk and opportunities here at Benzinga. Stay subscribed, stay informed, and stay safe, traders.